In this video, we're gonna be going step by step through the cabinet app that is inside of Easel. This is a really easy way to design cabinets and cut them out on your machine. Hey, what is up? I'm Brandon on the Inventables team. In a previous video, we went through the full process of the design, the cut, and then the build of a cabinet. And there's a link for that video right up there. But in this video, we wanna dive a little bit deeper into the Easel app specifically. All right, for our first step, we need to get into Easel. And you can do that by going to inventables.com and then click and log into easel. You could also go to easel.com and it will redirect you here. Now from here, we are going to create a brand new project. So I'm gonna click new project up here on the right. And I'm going to call this cabinet demo. Anything we've added are labels. This is a nice way to organize a bunch of projects that you might have. So I already have a cabinet label. So I'm going to label this cabinet and hit close. Now, if you're new to Easel, a quick overview of what you're looking at. So working from left to right, uh, over here, and this might be collapsed, this is your tool panel. And so you're able to add shapes, lines, text, as well as apps, which we'll get into here in a minute. Right here is your design space. So this is where you'll create your 2D design. This is also where the cabinet app will bring in the design. Then over here, you're getting a 3D preview of what your piece is going to look like. And then up at the top on the right, you get a few different settings. One is your material settings. So how big this piece of material is. You can also select what type of material you're working with. Then over here are going to be your cut settings. So what bit you're gonna use, specifically what are the speeds and the plunge rates, all those different types of things. Now we won't get deep into the cut settings. We did a full overview of that in our big cabinet build video that we did right up there. Now we are going to adjust a couple things before we get going. Uh, first is the machine. I wanna make sure I have the right one selected. So I am working with the X-Carve Pro. And if you're using Easel Pro, you can select different machine profiles if you have multiple. But in my case, I've got the X-Carve Pro. So if I zoom out, you can see I have a pretty big work area. Right now the dimensions are in millimeters and I actually wanna change it over to inches. So down here at the bottom left, flip that. It's gonna switch everything to inches. The material I'm gonna be working with is a four foot by four foot piece of plywood. So I'm gonna go ahead and update that. So that's gonna be 48 inches by 48 inches. And then it's gonna be three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to be using birch plywood for this design. Now, if I zoom out, you can see our material is taking up the entire work area. Okay, so at this point we can jump into the cabinet app. So if you look for this little building block icon, this is our app menu. If you select that, you can see all the different apps that will make different things inside of Easel. Up here at the top right is our basic cabinet designer. You can also search for it up here in case it's not showing up right there, depending on when you're watching this video. Once we select the basic cabinet designer, we are brought to this window. And from here, we can put in all of our different settings so that we can create our design for our cabinet. Now, a couple things to keep in mind as we get going. Once you start putting in your values, make sure not to hit either escape or X and exit out of this window because those settings won't save. So you wanna make sure you don't exit out before you import it here at the bottom. Now, this is a frameless cabinet, also known as a Euro style cabinet. And because of that, everything is in millimeters. So this 960 is 960 millimeters, which works out to about 37.8 inches. So if you're working in inches, just know that you're gonna need to convert it. So as we are adjusting these values, you can see that this is updating over here on the right. And these are gonna be our different pieces. And this is like a flat pack version of the cabinet. So you've got your back in the middle, you've got the sides on the left and the right, and then the top piece is the top and the bottom piece is down at the bottom. Now, if you've never built a cabinet before, this might look a little weird. So I've actually got a 3D model that I made, and this is what we are going to be creating at the very end. And this is pretty much a frame of a basic cabinet. Now, one thing you might notice is that it is missing a door, and we'll talk about how you can design a door after we go through the cabinet app. Just know that all the stuff we're doing for the cabinet app is going to be for the frame, and the door and the shelves will need to be separate. So when we're talking about a frameless cabinet, it literally means it doesn't have a frame. So these edges, in our case of the plywood, are going to be exposed. So you'll probably have to do something like edge banding to clean those up. And that's opposed to a more standard cabinet that actually has a face frame. So this is another 
another cabinet design. But in this case, this has a face frame that goes on the very front of the cabinet. And that might be made from multiple pieces, but for this model, it is just one. And where that really matters is in the type of hinges that you're gonna use. So you can get hinges that attach to the face frame itself, or you can get hinges that are going to attach directly to the sides of the cabinet as well when you're working with a door. So when we switch back over to our frameless cabinet, that is what we're going to be working with. Okay, so let's start putting in dimensions. The first one is going to be our overall height. So going off this model, we have 762 millimeters. So we're gonna put in 762. And as we do that, you can see this updates. Then for the size width, this is your overall width. And then the size depth will be your overall depth. So our overall width is 508 millimeters. And then our depth is going to be 209.55 millimeters. And you can see as we are changing these values, the overall design is updating as we go. Okay, so moving on down to our next section, it is asking us about the material thickness of both the top and the bottom. The stock is normally set to 19 millimeters, which works out to three quarters of an inch. And that is what we're gonna be working with. So we're gonna have 19 for both the top and the bottom, 19 for the sides, and then 19 for the back. So depending on how you're building your cabinet, your back might be thinner. Just know right here is where you'll put in your thickness so that everything adjusts. Because we are using these slots or these dados so if I adjust the thickness of the back, you can see those grayish lines are going to adjust in thickness. So you definitely wanna make sure you're using the correct thickness. So we're gonna switch it back to 19 and then move on down. Okay, so next up is the corner style. You have two different options. You've got the full side as well as the full top. This cabinet is going to be a full top. So looking from the top or from the bottom, you're not going to see any other parts of your cabinet. Now a full side will do the same thing and just on the side. So when you're looking from the right or the left, all you're going to see is the right or the left piece. So as we flip this around, you can see from the top, now you're going to see both your left and right sides, as well as the dados that are going to be cut out from your piece. So we're going to be going full top. So we want to make sure that is selected. Next up, we get an option for a base. And if I click the base, you can see that we've added material to the sides as well as an entirely new piece to the very bottom. Now you might know this as a toe kick, but basically this is something you'll add to a base cabinet because it's gonna be sitting on the floor. And here's an example of what that looks like. So you can see our side piece, we have this additional material at the bottom on both sides. And you can also see we have this entirely new piece and that is what is going to fill that gap between the sides once we've got that cut out made. Now there's a couple different values that you can adjust. First is going to be the thickness of your base. So in my case, I'm still doing it the same as everything else. So 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. Next up is going to be your base height. So how high that base is going to go up. It's set right now to 64 millimeters, which is just about two and a half inches. So I'm gonna keep it at that as well as my reset. So the recess is just this distance from the front of the cabinet to the start of the front of your base. This also is gonna be about two and a half inches or 64 millimeters. Now for this cabinet, we're actually not gonna be doing a base. So I'm going to unselect that. But if you did wanna go that route, that's how you're gonna do it. So next up, we're gonna talk about shelf pins. And these are gonna be the holes where you can put in your pins or your shelf pins. And in our case, you can see we've got some shelves to put in there as a result. Now you have a few different options to do this. First is probably the easiest option. And the one I do the most is just full length shelf pins. If you select that, they're going to have pins running all the way down on both sides of your cabinet. Now, one thing to note, you can't adjust the distance between the shelves. So currently, if you have that selected, this is going to be your result. Now, if I unselect that, we can put in a specific number of shelves. So right now we are at 12, but if I drag this out, you can see that it is going to grow. Now the other thing you can do is adjust where the center point is for these shelves. So right now our overall height is 762. So if I divide that by two, 381 is going to be our center. And 
if we adjust that quantity, you can see that's going to spread out from the center. Now you can also adjust the whole distance. This isn't the distance going up and down. This is the distance side to side. So a lot of times if you just drag this out, nothing's going to happen. That's because this distance is bigger than the depth of your cabinet. But if you get it small enough, you can see that they will adjust. So I usually just have it at the max so that they're evenly spaced out on the sides. Now I am going to switch mine back to the full length pins and come down to our last options. And this has to do with how these pieces are going to fit together. The cabinet app uses a pretty simple groove system where you're putting in dados into your pieces and then you can put glue in those grooves or dados and then fit everything together. Now you have a couple different options for them. One is groove and that's what we have selected right now. Meaning if we flip around to the back, you can see we have a gap between the back of your back piece and the back of the actual cabinet. Now I have found this is handy, especially if you're going to mount this to the wall. So in this case, this distance is a half of an inch. That's handy because I can use a half inch piece of material, mount that to the wall and then set the cabinet on top of it. And everything is going to look flush from the side. And then you can screw directly into that material that's then going into the studs. So that's pretty handy, but you can also have this pushed all the way to the back. And to do that, you just switch this over to flush. So you can see that groove goes all the way to the end. So it's more like a rabbit. Now this version of the cabinet has that back flush. So if we were to take out our back piece, you can see that those grooves are going all the way to the end. One thing to note is you're going to get these holes when you're cutting out the sides. And that's just because when we cut this out, this is going the full length of the board with how the cabinet app is currently set up. So if you do have the groove selected, you can adjust that offset. Again, we're going with 12.75 or half an inch. And then you can also adjust your tolerance. So this is going to add to the thickness of those grooves. And this is definitely something I would play around with to find the tolerance that works best for you, where there's enough room for the glue, but it's also a nice, snug, tight fit. It's usually set at 0.3, and that's what I'm going to leave for this design. Okay, so once we've got everything the way we want it, we can bring it into easel. To do that, we just click import down here at the bottom. And it might look kind of crazy when it brings it in just because this is taking up a good bit of your material. You can actually click this home icon down here, kind of in the middle at the bottom. And you can see all your pieces laid out. We can select our pieces and we can move them around and arrange them so they can work best for your situation. Again, we're not gonna go into the cut settings for this video. We get way more in depth than the full build of this cabinet right up there. Now, one additional thing you might add to this cabinet is a door. So I've added a door to this model. And this isn't something that the cabinet app supports directly, but it's pretty easy to put together. So I just have a really simple door with some rails and styles that are put on top of this big back piece. And since these are all squares, it's going to be pretty easy to put these directly into easel. So to create the door, we're going to make a new workpiece. And the work pieces are down here at the very bottom, the big plus icon. This might be minimized if you hit that arrow. That that will pop back up. Click that. You can also rename these uh, just to help you keep track of what's going on. So I'm going to call this door. And then I'm going to rename our first one. So we're just going to create a simple square. So coming over here on the left to the shape tool and click the rectangle. And then we can adjust the shape. Make sure you've got it selected. So right now I don't have anything selected. I'm just got to click on it. You're going to get this shape and cut menu. In the shape menu, you've got not only position, but also your size. So right here, it's set to 21.6 inches. But we know the exact dimensions of the door, so we can just update it there. Now, since I'm working in metric, I'm going to switch this back over to metric. And then I'm going to put in 508 by 762. And there we've got our door. Now, right now with how we set it up, it's going to carve out a pocket. So you can see it's just going to be carving into the material. We don't want that. So if I come over to my cut menu and then I take this all the way to the bottom, so 19 millimeters, and then the cut path, I change from a pocket to on the outside of the path. 
then we are going to get a door that is being cut out. If you're putting in exact dimensions, make sure you select on the outside of the path so everything on the inside is sized the same way and none of the material gets removed because of the size of the bit. Now the rail and styles are simple rectangles as well. So you can just put them in the exact same way we did the door. And then also you can carve out your shelves the exact same way. So as long as you know the width and the depth of the inside of your frame, you can use that to create as many shelves as you need. Now, once you get all of your designs made, you may want to keep track of dimensions or just notes on these different work pieces. Again, when you're making a cabinet, you're probably going to have multiple work pieces once everything is put together. So if you come down here to the bottom, you click this down arrow, you can go over to the notes and then you can type in dimensions or whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to do the door size as 508 by 762 millimeters. And then I've got that if I ever need it in the future. And you can also see when the work pieces have a note, there's going to be a little note icon. If you click that, it's going to pop that note up. Now, if you want a more in-depth walkthrough of what you do next, so all of the cut settings and what it actually looks like to set it up on your machine, again, make sure and check out that full build video of the cabinet that we've done. Now, hopefully by walking through all these features inside of the cabinet app, you're going to be better equipped to make your own cabinet. Now, I'd love to know what questions you have as well as different topic ideas for future trainings. Make sure and leave them in the comments below.